divided these examples in the two parts so today we just going to take you through these examples halfway through where we demonstrate the uh, calculation of uh, side wind speed or design wind speed so is a church auditorium buildings is uh, being designed on the water main in in port so uh, it's is located in port western australia only westerly wind directions will be considered so the wind coming from the west side is you need to design only from the west side the wind coming from the west side uh, that's we need to design for the wind coming from north wind coming from south wind coming from east is no need to consider in the workshop examples we will consider all directions because students may ask <laughs> the we not always design for only one side of the wind so what happens if the wind coming from east or north or or or, or, or from other directions we will take you through in the workshop uh but to start with let's consider the wind coming from west side the building will have one door 900 mm by 21 um uh 2.1 meters uh, door uh it has a uh, four windows and they are on the north side of the and south side so north side and south side if you take the no building uh if you take the building uh, like auditorium and if you have a uh, north side so you have a have a door and it has a four uh, four windows so you have a let's say one two three four windows and same thing on the south side that you have four windows and one door so north and south of the building uh, stained glass windows in the west wall so north south east and west so on the west side you have a uh, window which is the stained glass window if you if you have a church building you will see this kind of a window uh you you have this kind of window and in that window you have a different like a colors if you if you if you know that patterns are like this so it's a stained glass window if you if you search the google it will show you the stained glass window uh in double door on the east side so on each sides you have double door um and the dimensions are given this doors dimensions and the we and the and those dimensions would be helpful in our internal pressure calculations okay so uh, 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 next week i will take you through this opening again but just just to complete this uh, example question reading i have put these details here so in the wind calculations uh, the velocity calculations this opening will not be useful the site is at the top of the beach side reserve near the indian ocean and fronting a road so that is useful information for us in this examples where the site is is located there are no building at all to the west of the church site so when you consider the wind coming from north south west the wind is coming from the west there is no any buildings that are facing uh, the church okay so there is no any front buildings uh all the other buildings on the church side are behind the main auditorium building so it's is behind this building recurrence interval is 100 uh, 1000 years i will explain you what is recurrence interval but its details are given here the horizontal distance between the 7 meter and 14 meter contour is 100 100 meters that all also explain terrain category is 2 what we need to find we need to find the wind pressures on the stained glass windows we need to find how much pressure is coming on that glass window remember the glass window stained glass windows is sitting on the west side i think uh, north and south wall so it is sitting on the on the uh, uh, stained glass window is on the west side so that's good we have a stained glass window on the west side so the wind is coming from west and the the wind is hitting on that on that window so we need to find the, how much pressure is created on that on that window and the net uplift load per meter for the ultimate wind load on a highly loaded portals uh, examine half the rafter spacing 12.6 meters on the rack portal spacing is 3.2 meters so that information we will use it uh, they have given you the some sites so this is our church this is mainly flat east here for 400 meters it's not this is church auditorium and this is contour i hope you heard about the contour you know the contour if you if you if you have a mountain like a like a like a like a kind of um, uh let me draw up with the deeper let's say you have a you have like a mountain and you you can draw this contour you know the 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 line here that you can draw so the the uh this is the contour that i am showing it here 
the smaller the radius the higher the points okay so if you if you can imagine that they have uh, they have uh, they have provided these contours and this is just a part of um, just part of the contour so so you can imagine this is this one and then you have this one uh, let's say one two three and four so one two and three and four that's how they they present contour and if i just cut it off and then i present it here so that is just a part of the contour i hope you understand that contour story and this distance that um, 14 meters 14 meters is just the height uh, from the ground you have these 14 meters this first one and then 10 meters for the second one let's say this is 10 meters from the second one and then two meters and and so on so i hope you understand this 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 distance as well uh, this 250 meters is the horizontal distance so how can i explain that uh, uh, between uh, so this uh, this is a vertical distance they put 250 so the so the so if i if i if i want to have this so the horizontal distance from this point to across is 250 meters okay where you have this coastline so I hope you understand 250. So you can have a distance between the contours, the horizontal distance between the contours as well. Uh, if you if you if you have a AutoCAD diagrams, you can you can measure it all this dimension. But I hope you understand this. You have this church building sitting on 14 meters on the uphill, and then you have a different contour lines given to you. That contour lines represents up to the ground levels, and at the ground levels you have this this coastline. And these uh, measurements are given 14 meters, 2 meters, and so on. And 250 meters given. The plan view of your church building is given here. This is a plan view. If you have a church building, um, if you have church building, and if you look from the top, let's say you have a uh, drone, and if you are just looking from the drone, you have a camera, and if you look at the drone, this is a, from the top, from the roof, you will have this, this plan view. This is on the side view. So if you look at standing on the road and if you look at from the side, you have these, these side views. Right. Um, um, uh, so this is already explained. Windward wall, leeward wall, and wind is going, opening, and, and blowing it up. So that's all good. Now, basically, any wind load calculations will follow these steps. We, we always need to find the side wind speed. Okay, that is step number one. Then from the side wind speed, we find the design wind speed. Okay. We find the design wind speed and from design wind speed we will find the distributed load and then we will find the uh, the wind force so this is a typical steps any examples that you might have if you are designing it the wind so you might have these four steps now look the max is very simple here meaning you have maximum two equations not more than two equations you have maximum two equations within the two equations you need to read from the uh, from the table so this is the first equations that is side wind speed and i will show you in the standard where is city so side wind speed this if you go on page number eight and if you go to the close number 2.2 you have this side wind speed that is vr md mzk ms and mt now you you uh, uh, I think the, in the lectures you already know, but all this one has a one value. The troublemaker is this MD. You have eight different value because you have eight different directs and north, south, east, west, and so on. Now standards put this one in the bracket. Look at that. Uh, look at this one that you can see. The standard has why not they write VR MD and then why they put in the bracket? Those three different M values are put it in the bracket. Why? Because they are basically called um, uh, site exposure multiplier. So they, they depend on different site exposure multiplier. So you have three site exposure multiplier. Uh, Heather already mentions minimum design wind speed. Regardless of your, your calculations, you need to have this, uh, this, uh, this one written here on clause 2.3, saying that um, for ultimate limit state design, your design uh, speed will never be less than 30 mega, 30 meter per second. So if you have a 20 meter per second, no. Look, some engineers might uh, play tricks and they might say, no, uh, whatever you explain, my speed is 20 meter per second. My wind is blowing 20 meter per second. So you use tiny members to save some costing. And if someone said, why do you use it? Look at the max. 
then standards get smart. Oh, you are being smart. Let me tell you something. Regardless of your locations, regardless of which directions you are using, regardless you are sitting on the top of the hill, regardless you are sitting on the ground, if you have tree, no tree in front of you, if you have shielding, no shielding, forget it. You must have 30, mega, 30 meter per second at least wind speed. Okay, don't argue. 30 meter per second as the minimum benchmark that you need to use it if you have a if you have a building. So they so so, so 30 meter per second is the minimum. We need to make this check. There is a second equation, pressures uh, that we need to we need to go. Importance levels. If you are normal structures, importance levels is all generally two. Um, so that's uh, quick notes there. Okay, let's uh, let, let's start uh, solving these examples. As I mentioned, we need to. Uh, copy this ex uh, side wind speed. We need to first get this side wind speed. So I'm copying these examples, these equations from close to point two, and I'm copying these five uh, parameters. And we go through these parameters one by one. So let me turn off, start talking. Um, generally, uh, comments that I get it that um, that I talk fast or I go too fast. Please stop me. Ask me the question that okay, slow down, please. This is. This is going way too fast and I'm not following, okay? So there is no any offense to stop me and ask me the question so, so we can control your learnings from the start, not end up at the end of the semester saying, okay, it's, it's not going through. So we cite beta, and by the way, beta, I will explain you. We are m the bracket. Look, bracket is mz cat. This is site exposure parameters, okay? MS and MP, right? So this um, this MS site beta. So this beta is is they have four betas. So beta equal to north, beta equal to south, beta equal to uh, sorry this is east, and beta equal to north south east west yeah west, and then you have beta equal to uh, northeast, beta equal to southeast, beta equal to southwest, and beta equal to northwest. So that is the four, eight different beta. Beta represent eight cardinal directions. Okay, the, you have typically eight directions. Now let's crack this example one by one. Uh, sorry, this each parameter one by one. Now it says that is uh, we are. What is the VR stand for? By the way, you no need to remember that if you come back uh, on this one, uh, each parameters, each parameters are explained it here. Okay, I'm not reading it. I will read it one by one. So we are regional gust wind speed. Okay, in meters per second for annual probability of oxidants of one over R as given in section number three. So we need to go in section number three. Um, let's go on section number three. There you go, section number three, and these tables will give you the regional wind speed. Now, um, this regional wind speed requires a little bit of uh, little bit of uh, a little bit of information. So what we need, we need to know what regions we are here. If it is non-cyclonic region or cyclonic region, uh, within this non-cyclonic region, you have uh, region A is divided again into the seven classification: region W and region B. And then you have a uh, regional wind speed for for various VR uh, uh, Okay, I will go through it one by one. Now, before we doing that one, we need to calculate this region. To calculate the regions, we just turn the page over, and we have a page number seventeen. On page number seventeen, uh, we have uh, region is a uh, Western Australia, and Western Australia is in the port. So over here in the part, we are sitting in the region A1. Everyone agree? I can stop here and 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 and, and give you some time to understand this one. Is a map of Australia. It has uh, it has five total regions. Region A, region you can read the region A. They are written in the bold letters, so you can you can find it. The text given in the in the not bold letters. They are they are major cities. Uh, uh, region B, region B is here. You can see these are the region Bs uh, in the in the in just um, uh, east of the Australia. That is region B. 
uh, north and um, uh, northeast you have region C here. Again, there are some region B here, region C, region B, region C, uh, region D. I'm not sure where is the region D. You can you can read through it. Or oh, there are some region D here, region C, and there are region W. You can also scan through for the region W somewhere. Uh, yes, yeah, so there you you can find those region Ws by yourself. All right. Now the major thing is region A is divided into further C1 sub classification region a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 and a7 if you are migrating to australia recently and you're not familiar with the cities of australia i i encourage you to just go through it uh, by yourself to read all these all these um, all these uh, all the cities so some of the major cities are are written in the capital letter so you you can you can you can go through this uh, uh, this by yourself but we are in the port so that is region A1. I hope you understand that part is is um, is um, uh, written here. I can show it to you. So that is part uh, water map. Okay. So uh, let's say go back to our examples. We are uh, looking for VR. Uh, for this VR, first we need to find the region, and that region is A1. Where is coming from? This world coming from figure number uh, 3.1 a and uh, because we are in port so therefore therefore we have therefore we have region a1 okay everyone everyone okay to find the region before this uh, uh, one so you have region a now um, uh, once you find this region A, which is which is uh, which is very helpful for region that you have in the region A, non-cyclonic. So in that case, we are sitting in this column. So we have been focusing on on particular this 3.1 on this one. We forget about all this one because we are in region A. Now uh, these tables is given by as header mentioned Bureau of Metrology. Uh, we use anemometers to record. Probably there are maybe latest technology these days to measure. Around in 2007, around 500 recording device sitting right now, maybe more. They are constantly measuring this wind speed for us, and they will give us this data. Now there are few things that we need to we need to so look at this parameter V R. So we have V R equal to one. V R equal to sorry, you can't see that. V R equal to one. V R equal to five. V R equal to ten, and V R equal to twenty, and so on. Right. The severity of the wind speed increases as the return interval you are increasing. You can see the wind speed is, is increasing. So these are, we call it uh, probably return intervals, uh, uh, average recurrence interval, sorry. R is an average recurrence interval. What is that? Uh, uh, a common practice might be to design for a working life of 25 years in service for, let's say, um, annual probability of accidents is 1 in 25, okay? Return period, so that is, let's say, return period is this average recurrence interval. How often these speeds come along? So if you say that V equal to 1, how often your 30 meter per second will come uh, in, in, in that situation? So that is the representation of this, this V1. So annual probability of accidents, which is APE, Let's say it is the probability that that event, that event with this velocity, uh, uh, we talk about happens any particular year. So, so this is the annual probability of accidents in any particular year. How much that event will going to occur? So, for that case, let's say we have importance levels. Okay, as Headers mentions in his lectures, we have four different importance levels. Now, where are you gonna get that importance levels? If you go back to this 1170.0, and if you go back to this nice tables, um, that is, let me open that table for you. Yeah, here you go. So it's, it's nicely written, no equations, no maps. It's table 3.1 of AS 1170.0 on page number 13. You have uh, different importance levels given. There are five importance levels, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, um, so it's depending on how populated your structure is, right? If you have a 
uh, if you have a high consequence of loss of human life or very great economic, social or environmental consequences, you might have a, uh, have a, have a three and four. Okay, for normal structures, like a normal structure or structure not falling into the order levels, you will have a importance. Generally, we will have importance levels too. If you have a, uh, let's say, hospital or if you have a, if you have a uh, fire station, something they are designed for importance levels three and four. Uh, let's say you have something sitting in Alice Spring, right? No one using it. It's just um, it's just a storage. There is no humans going. You might design for importance levels one. So so that's uh, depending how where you are designing. Depending if it is someone knock it down that building by wind, how many human life will be affected? So that's that's how these importance levels are. So we normally gonna take importance level two for our structures, not too low, not too high, because it's a normal auditorium building. So let's say for importance levels two, and then you turn the page just page over a little bit on page number 15, and you have table 3.3 on the same standards. Okay, you page turn the couple of page over. Then look, normally we design it for um, we, we design it for uh, for 50 years. Okay, so for for 50 years uh, uh, the uh, for 50 years we will have this importance. Uh, the, the the probabilities of one over 500. That's how you find the annual probability of oxidants on ultimate limit state. So that's uh, one over 500. Now how it gonna help? So once you have this uh, V over 500, which is Newton period of 500, uh, for that you can say annual probability of oxidants is equal to one over R. That is the written period. So if you just take uh, raise your times by 100 you have 0.2 percent uh, of of that chance that will occur this year so any particular wind that you are considering is very low probability that that maximum wind will comes at your house to knock it down is very low 0.2 percentage okay so mcc is a national construction code assume 50 years of working design life mostly you have 50 years of work working life one in every 500 years importance levels two so one storm every 500 years. So that's that 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 speed that I'm talking about. If I take v equal to 500, it means that 45 meter per seconds. That is the maximum speed that will hit your wall in 500 years. Okay, so it's it will comes, but it they are very high. So if you if you take this one, then it is just uh, that that's what the meaning of those those knots. Most structures you are dealing with going to have importance levels levels too. So that is a quick note. I hope it is helpful to, to understand some of this terminology. Uh, I think some of the details is already given in our question. So we no need to use these informations uh, because we have given for because if it is specified, you can use it. If it's not specified, you can use your judgment. So it says a recurrence interval is 1000 years. So we take it for uh, for V uh, 1000 and that's uh, uh, let me recurrence interval is given for us. So R is given 1000 years. Okay, and if I go back to the standards, so we have V 1000 and we have 46 meter per seconds for a region A. I hope you understand that. So V 1000, let's say V R equal to 1000, you have 46 meter per second. And that is coming from table number uh, 3.1. Right? I hope you understand. The first one that we have it here is the V R equal to 46 meter per second. I hope you don't have any issue for that one. Let me know if you have any questions. The first one is done. No questions. Let's go for this M D. So this one is called V R is called regional wind speed by the way these tables that i show it to you here by the way these tables which i show it to you here they measure for three seconds three second gust speed they, they they mention somewhere here and they don't measure on the on the on the ground they have a flat ground and they lift up this anemometer at 10 meters from the ground so these all the speed that they measures it's not, in, it's not, it's just an information that I'm sharing with you. So these are just uh, putting 10 
uh, meters above the ground and they measure it uh, measure it at, at, at that at that at that levels okay and that is regional wheel speed and that is measuring meter per second now md now we go back to that standard again i will share with you and this md let me go back this md by the way is called wind directional multiplier for eight cardinal direction beta as given in section number three so it's called wind direction multiplier okay that's good we don't need to remember so that is very good so if you turn the page over that this is the this is a page number 15 if you turn the page number over page number 16 you have a wind direction multiplier that much information is given to you section 3.3 or close 3.3 and for region a and w we need to use table 3.2 for region B, C, and D, we read this point 95 and 1. So we are in region A1. I think uh, we are in region A1. So let me go back. So uh, uh, is a, uh, oops, sorry, is a uh, MD, and we call it wind direction multi plier and that is given in section 3.3 most probably the table mostly we're going to use table 3.2 now for this table 3.2 we need the region and we already found region a1 right if you remember that we found the region a1 so if i go back here so here it's asking there are various column region A1 to AC1 and region W. So we are in region A1. So it's good that we're going to use these columns. Now, once you have this region A1, you have different cardinal directions, right? You have different cardinal directions. North side, if the wind coming from north side, you will have 0 0.90, 0 0.9. No, sorry, I can lift it up. If you have wind coming from north side, your MD is 0 0.9. If the wind is coming from northeast, you will have 0 0.8 and so on. By the way, these tables is telling me that generally the wind in Australia, generally for this region, wind blowing from, because look at that, one, one meaning is a maximum. The, this value is 0 0.8 to 0 0.1, because you can see if you have a, this side wind speed, if you multiply by one, it's, it's, it's okay. If you reduce it, this side wind speed reduce, okay? So if you are designing in Australia, then your western day wind is always strong. You can look at that region one to AC1. The wind coming from the west side is generally the strongest in Australia. Look at this. And it's not telling me, it's not me telling you, this is the standards telling you that, okay, in Australia, wind coming from the west side is the strongest one. So you, if you are designing the structures, which are, which are, which are, which are, which are westernly wind facing, uh, you might need to put, put the stronger beam on the west side stronger column on the west side so if someone said okay i'm concerned about the wind you generally think about the wind coming from the west side if you look at the structure from the four different side north south east west you will find some bracing they are on the west side not all the side but only some wind bracings are putting on the west side so now if you go uh, somewhere and you observe the structures you will look oh why these bracings only facing on the west side not on the others this is the one this md is telling us look guys i will come hard and hit you back from the west side so if your west side is not strong i will knock you down so that's what he's telling one right so that's that's just a quick notes it's no need to uh, that's what i put here um, that wind does not blow equally from every directions uh, wind going different directions region a carry between 0.8 to uh, one and in region a1 wind blow hardest from the west extra resistance for, to the, for the for, from the reverse side okay so that's that's the quick notes but you don't need to worry it's just a quick notes for you oh by the way so so this md has a wind coming from west side okay so md is equal to one now there is a very informative uh, given to us for the design of the uh, wind speed look md this one here when you have this design wind speed when you have this design wind speed it says that the building orthogonal design wind speed shall be taken as a maximum cardinal direction side wind speed linearly interpolated between the cardinal point within the sector 45 degree orthogonal direction is considered and this is the figure now let me explain
explain you what, what they are talking about okay for this md now let me explain you that in a very simple you you, you know you read that notes okay don't worry if you don't understand so let's say you have this this building okay let's say wind is coming from the west side because in our case is coming from the west side now the standard saying that you need to consider the wind coming from plus 45 degree and minus 45 degree let's say this 45 going from here 45 coming from here so this is not uh, west I believe and this is south west I believe so it says that if the wind is coming from the west side that is red one you don't just consider the wind coming from the west side you need to take a sector you need to take a plus 45 and minus 45 from that direction and you take the maximum so md is equal to maximum that not west and then you have a wind coming from the west and then you have this southwest right so this is the wind directions that is coming and this is 45 degree to the both side okay so that's okay maximum of uh, i will show you different way as well okay uh, in the uh, you will you will you will experience this one this maximum things as well so uh west side we have southwest 0.95 one and 0.95 so i i'm just reading this uh, southwest and, and 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 this one so we will take it this one so we will take a 0.95 northwest one and 0.95 so in this one okay so it's just under saying that if in case this one is wind coming but if this wind is maximum coming from this side you might need to consider the maximum md okay that's what it's it's really really picky the standard is really picky if making sure that you are not uh, uh, compromising any side so md wind direction multiplier is calculated which is one vrv calculated now these are a site exposure multiplied okay let's uh, go back and we need to go for mz cat so mz cat how do we find their name of the mz cat now the mz cat let's go back to this definition again and mz cat is terrain height multiplier as given in the section number four okay so let's go to section number four now uh, section 4 site exposure multiplier look at the site exposure multiplier meaning that site exposure multipliers meaning that these are three are site exposure multiplier mz cat ms and mt that are given in the section number 4 and the name because they put it in the bracket that site exposure multiplier mz cat ms and mt there are three different uh, site exposure multiplier now for site exposure multipliers, we need to have this MZ cat, which is section 4.2. Now, in that one is a, is this uh, terrain category? You can see this this terrain category CAT. And by the way, this MZ cat is given here nicely uh, for terrain height multiplier in the in the 4.1 tables. Okay, if you turn the page over, page number 20, it has a MZ cat. Uh, let me lift it up. On table 4.1, we're going to use to calculate this MZ cat. But before we calculate the MZ cats, we need to investigate two parameters. One is the what terrain categories we have. Terrain category one, terrain category two, terrain category three, terrain category four. What terrain categories we have, and what what is the height of our our structure? So you need to figure it out too. Where are we going to find the terrain category information? We're going to find the terrain category information. Uh, in this one is is clearly written terrain category one is very exposed open terrain with the few no obstruction so if you think of um, a limited size water surface if you think terrain category let's say in alice spring you might have terrain category very open terrain right there is not much uh, in that one terrain category 1.5 um, uh, wind directions terrain height multiplier for this terrain category shall be obtained from interpolation tc1 and tc2 of table 4.1 so you just need to do the interpolations between these these, these two terrain category two 
uh, uh, create a subdivision isolated tree and uncut grass. Okay, so you have you have some uh, grass and some isolated tree. So that is terrain category two. Terrain category two point five. Uh, it's just the linear interpolations and it's going to represent between these two uh, one. So they have not provide much information about 1.5 and 2.5. It says it's between these two. Terrain category three is a suburban housing. So if you are sitting right now in one of the Melbourne suburb or Bendigo suburbs, you will fall in terrain category number three. Industry and dense forest. And terrain category three, number is large, high and closely placed constructions. Uh, industrial complex. So you can read this one and I think you can figure it out. There is not much complex. Uh, but for our case, we are taking terrain category number two. Uh, open terrain including grassland with well scattered operator have a height generally 1.5 to 5 meters. No more than two obstacles per hectare. Farmland clear subdivision with isolated tree and uncut grass. Uh, how are taking terrain category two? Because it's, it's, it's dimensions in the question something that they have nothing on the west side. And everything on the behind the auditorium. So they say there is no building at all to the west of the church side. So therefore we take it uh, terrain category number two. So let's say because it says that there is no any front building. So let's say MZ terrain category two. Okay. Uh, let me write terrain uh, category two. Where did I get it from close 4.2.1 okay now if you turn the page over you need to calculate the value of z this is z okay uh, if you turn the page over you have this height z uh, so no, normally i go on this uh, page number on this figure to get the z so here on these figures it has nice uh, pictures i think these pictures that we have it is matching with our our structures why? Because if you go back to the questions, it's, um, it's sitting here. So you can see this is the this is closest match. So in here you have this you have this uh, reference height that Z is called reference height and H is the uh, average roof height. Okay. So if you if you have want to calculate this H value, you are not just picking up the the, the top point of here. So you need to find in the midpoint of this slant uh, uh, roof and you need to find this midpoint that's how it's, it's average roof height measure so if you are designing a 20 story building so if you have a, if you have a multi story building your windward load is going to be different at each story so you are allowing to calculate that at a different reference site so you need to when you have if you have a single story you can just uh, put this uh, as a as a z equal to h in the last structures, calculate windward walls load every every floor z individually. In one or two story structures, might only calculate at z equal to h. Um, that's a different story. So in that case, we will calculate this z equal to h. So let me go back here. So uh, so this one 2.7 and say 1.8. So let me draw it. So here you go, 2.7 meter and I believe this is 7.8 meters and H is sitting somewhere here. So to find this H, we can just quickly say that, okay, whatever this distance, that distance would be 7.8 take away 2.7. So let me quickly do it. Say 1.8, take away 2.7. We get 5.1. We get 5.1 and then half of the 5.1, we get 2.55. So the hedge equal to 2.7 meter plus 2.55 meters plus 2.7, you get 5.25 meters. As a height and for this one z equal to h 5.25 meters and uh, we have a terrain category 5.25 terrain category 2 is very close to the 5 so we just take it 0 0.9 you can do the interpolation but i think it to two decimal places we always get this is very close to 0 0.91 so i take it 
z equal to 5 terrain category 0.91 fz cat is 0.91 let me m z is 5.25 meter terrain category 2 which is mz cat equal to i will take it 0.91 and that is from table number 4.1 right so we found we found this uh, parameters here we find this vr md and mz cat this is the first exposure parameters like right? how your surrounding uh, of your structure is right mz cat uh, um, is 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 that representing that how 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 terrain your your area is so mz cat 0.91 now ms what is ms we call let me go back to the standard By the way, I can show you the standards. Go back again here. And, and here we have MS, shielding multipliers given in the section, and this is exposure uh, one. Now, shielding multiplier, uh, this is section 4.3. That uh, shielding multiplier, we call this one shielding multiplier. We call it shielding multiplier and that will give one in the close 4.3 right um uh, shielding multipliers okay so over here um we uh there is no any uh, let me go back here let me write this one there are no buildings for westernly wind, right? There is no any buildings in front of in front of westernly building because it is 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 mentioned here. It's mentioned here that uh, there are no buildings at all in the west of the church site. All other buildings on the church site are behind the main auditorium buildings. Okay, so therefore we take it. I think I put the notes while you're discussing with Heather that um, uh, terrain and surrounding buildings providing shielding may change in the design working life of the building due to the new development in the area. So if you have new development and someone just put the building in front of you, that, that might change. Therefore, it is important to consider no one the future change to the terrain roughness okay so that's you just need to just need to aware that now look someone might say what about the trees if i have a house and there is a big trees what will do look the trees we can't we can't consider as a shielding someone will come and cut the trees this is this is typical someone will cut the trees so uh, generally tree is not considered as a as, as a shielding multiplier but if you have a high rise building as has a mentions if you have some building no one going to knock it down these buildings in 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 their in their service life so you might consider that's a shielding multiplier for high rise uh, buildings but for our case we have shielding multiplier ms equal to 1 because the it specify that this church auditorium does not expose to any any front wall so that's uh, very useful information Okay, last one is MT. What is MT? And I have 10 minutes to explain MT. Okay, that's fine. MT equal to, go back here. I hope you are getting the message what we are trying to achieve uh, through these standards. It's very simple. Uh, MT, topographic multiplier as given in the section number four. Yeah, so its name is topographic multiplier. What is trying to achieve? Uh, there you go, topographic multiplier is on section 4.4. So, topographic multiplier and that is given in the section number 4.4. Right, so that is the topographic multiplier for section 4.4. Now, we uh, we have this information given here. That for topographic multiplier, 
you have general information that empty for New Zealand and Tasmania over 500 meter above the sea levels, you need to calculate this empty. But our site is not in New Zealand or in Tasmania, so we no need to worry about it. Uh, elsewhere, so we go to B, a larger value of MT and uh, M, MT equal to MH and M lead. So we, we found some information, MT equal to maximum of MH comma M lead. Okay, that's good. Uh, that is in the close 4.4.1 B. Right, so that's good. Now what about MH? So we need to calculate two things. So MH heel safe multiplier. So that's good. Let's do it. MH is equal to heel safe multiplier. What is MH? Uh, how are we going to get the MH? These informations are given here. There are three different categories to get the MH. If you fall this H over 2 LU is less than 0 0.05, you have MH. You have MH and this one. So we need to calculate this H over 2 LU. So we need to get this H over 2 LU to get the MH. Now what is H? If you turn the page over, they have given you this information, right? If you on figure 4.2, figure 4.3, you have this H. This is basically how high your structure. So this is your, uh, your structures and how high there is city from the ground level. So that is the H, okay? That sounds good. I can find it, that one. So H, we can go back to our questions saying that if you go back to this contour, this contour saying that you have 14 meters where your auditorium is sitting, right? The 14 meters. So that's fine. H equal to 14 meters. So H equal to 14 meters to LU. Now, what is LU? Now, LU is basically the horizontal distance from your locations to the distance where your half height is. Right? I repeat it again, that your site is here. If you, if you draw the horizontal line, but across where you hit the hedge over two, right? So that's, that's what it says. What does it mean? So let's say you have, you have this, this auditorium building here and the height is 14 meters. Let's say this height is 14 meters given to here. So it says that if you just take it seven meters somehow, and let's say this is the point, and if you measure from this point to this one, this is LU. Now, how are you going to measure it? Because it says that here, so it's basically, basically from this figure. Where is it? Okay, basically here. So this is 14 meter, 10 meters, uh, somewhere here, seven meters, because we need to find the seven meters. From this seven meters, we can calculate this distance. We can measure this distance because this is 250, that is 100 meters, right? So basically it's given here that um, the horizontal distance between the seven meter and 40 meter contour is for 100 meters, okay? So otherwise, if you have AutoCAD, you can just measure it or you can ask surveyor, uh, I need this distance. So they will give you that distance. So that is that is 100 meters. So let's uh, let's make it this 100 meters. And then you use your calculator 14 divided by 2 times 100, you get 0 0.07. Okay, so let's go back to the standard. And if you have a 0 0.07, if this is less than 0 0.05, you take it one. But if you have a, this one, you have this big information written here. So let's copy this one. So MH equal to one plus H over 3.5 Z plus L1, one minus X over L2. Right, so I just copy these values. So H we know, L1 and L2 we don't know, and X we don't know. So let's find some information. So H we already found it. LU we found it. X is the horizontal distance up with down with of structure to the crest of the hill region. S. So what is X? So it's basically saying that you have a crest, like you have this crest where you have slope, and then the x distance is where your structure is sitting. So if your structure is here, 
you will have a have an instance of uh, x is crashed here. Uh, but for our case, our x is zero because we are almost sitting on here. So we can just uh, 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 show you here. So if you have a structure here and this is your crash, so this is your distance x. But our structure is sitting here right on top of it. So we will have x equal to zero. Right. So if x equal to zero, we no need to calculate L2. But I can show you what is L2. Uh, if you read it here, uh, L2 is the length scale to determine the horizontal distance 4 times L1. Okay, all type downward 10 times L1. So if this is L2, L1, length scale to determine the vertical MS to take on as a greater of 0.36 LU, 0.4 H. So that's good. So L1 equal to maximum of 0.36 LU or 0.4 H. So we can substitute that value. 0.36 LU is 100 meters and 0.4 times the height is 14 meters. So if you just use the calculators, you get 0.36 times by 100, you get 36 and 0.4 times 14, you get 5.6. So maximum is 36. So if you substitute this L1 here, LU is getting zero because you have X equal to zero. So MH equal to one plus height of this one, 14 meters. It's just plugging in values. Z is 5.25 uh, plus L1 is 36 bracket over. So you get MH value of 1.10. Uh, let me say uh, whether it's uh, let me let me quickly do it. Uh, 3.5 times 5.25 plus 36. 14 divided by sir plus one. So 1.01. So that is mh. And we need to calculate m l as well. M l double e. So m double e is on this page so m double e so z equal to 0 so upwind 0 0.07 so we would have a less than 0 0.07 so it would be uh, 0 0.07 would be less than 1.01 .01. so probably we will have a what was that maximum of Uh, maximum of MH and MB and 0 0.07 is 1.08 and 1.10. So we can just do the interpolation. So MT equal to maximum of MH and MB. So if you do this, maximum of MH 1.01 .01 and MB. So MB we will have from here. For this value was 0 0.07 and if you do the interpolations, you will get 1.10. I will show you interpolation probably in the workshop. So you will have an experience to do the interpolation. So we take it 1.10. That's good. And Emily would be probably less than that one because if you see it here. Thank you for that. Uh, so here if you just do the interpolations, it's uh, 0 0.07 you will have a almost there 1.10. There is not much big difference where you can have a recognizable. So probably it's almost there. So 1.10. Now I think we have everything that we can do it. Side wind speed for west equal to uh, VR MD MZ cat MS MT. So VR was 46 meter per second. MD we calculated one, I believe. Uh, MD was 1 uh, times by bracket MZ cat. Uh, MZ cat was 0 0.91. 0 0.91. MS e shielding multiplier was 1 and MT was 1.10. So probably you will get uh, 46 
meter per second okay and the design wind speed because we already done the design wind speed for waste because we take it maximum you remember that so 46 meter per second is the design wind speed so the uh, next week we will calculate the pressure from this design wind speed so i think just two minutes over sorry about that um,